Hello, I'm Christoph Wanner from the University of Würzburg in Germany and I'm joined today by Mac Jardin from the George Institute for Global Health in Australia. We are going to discuss the real outcomes from the Credence and the Carmelina trials today. So I think I'm handed over to you, Mac, and you can give us uh, the basic results of the Credence study. Mm. Well, essentially what we found in Credence was a one-third reduction in renal outcomes, 30 to 34 percent reduction for the various outcomes we looked at. Our main outcome was a doubling serum creatinine or end-stage kidney disease or renal or cardiovascular death. And we looked at a range of other outcomes and got pretty concordant results. So that was very exciting news for patients. But the intervention, I think, was different. Uh, you, in your trial, you investigated an SGLT2 inhibitor. We did. We um, randomised patients to 100 milligrams of canagliflozin or matching placebo. Mm -hmm. And they stayed on that um, treatment throughout the study unless they started dialysis or received a transplant. Mm -hmm. And we in Carmelina, mm -hmm. we a cardiovascular safety and efficacy trial, right. we randomized the patient to linagliptine 5 milligram mm -hmm. over a period of median study duration of two years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So actually the intervention are different, yeah. maybe a different mechanism of action of yes. an SGLT2 inhibitor mm. and a DPP4 inhibitor. Mm. I think this is a difference in the trial, but how to the participant compare between yes. the two Well, trials. because we wanted to look at renal outcomes, we recruited a population at high risk for renal events. So we had uh, patients with an EGFR between 30 and 90, but we specifically targeted 60% of the total population under 60. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is we, uh, we only recruited people with high levels of albuminuria, more than 300 milligrams per gram. So they were a high risk population. But what mean GFR or median GFR did you have in so your trial? So mean EGFR in the end was 56 mils a minute. And we did get 60% with EGFRs less than 60. And we had a median um, albuminuria creatinine ratio of around 928. It was exactly the same GFR in Right, Carmelina. okay, yeah, similar. Um, yeah. 56 ml per minute. Yep. Uh, uh, but the inclusion criteria were different. Yes. We sampled uh, type 2 diabetics um, over the world with mm. an EGFR below 60, or if above 60, they should have albuminuria. But at the end, we came uh, to the same GFR yes. level. Yeah. Yeah. But overall, the, the, the participant in the trial had only 164 milligram per gram. Okay. So there were less albuminuria. Particularly overall. in that low EGFR yeah. group? Yeah. Right, right. And uh, the next difference was that Carmelina is a cardiovascular outcome trial and the, yes. the kidney outcomes are in the secondary. Right. So yeah. they are more or less exploratory and that's not so robust uh, than in your trial. Yeah, a different goal. Yeah. What were the cardiovascular results? Um, as in all uh, DPP4 inhibitor trials, they were uh, neutral. Mm -hmm. So both groups were similar. But if you comp if you say that the Carmelina trial is unique in accumulating high-risk kidney patients mm. and if the intervention is uh, safe in, in this vulnerable yes. group of patients, yes. then you would say that's uh, a good message for patients and doctors when they want to use DPP-4 inhibitor linagliptine, linagliptine in these high-risk mm. group. So. Yes, it's so important to test safety in patients yeah. with impaired kidney function and they've often left out of trials, so congratulations on, on completing Gamalina. Yeah, the, the linagliptine had uh, no impact on GFR. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you didn't see an impact on EGFR. Do you think two years was long enough for this type of agent? If you go back to the mechanism of action of this drug and uh, look at hemodynamic mm. effects of SGLT2 inhibitors and these hemodynamic effects occur more rapid than mm. maybe the antifibrotic effects of a DPP4 inhibitor, mm. then um, it could be that the trial with a uh, two-year duration was too short. Mm. Yeah. So you have to tailor the duration to the putative mechanism of action. Right. Mm. Now, uh, in the future, we would like to look more into slopes of EGFR mm. and 
at least we should see a, a tiny difference after two years. And as far as I've seen the data, it doesn't appear that there is an effect on slopes or on GFR. Yeah. And it could be that DPP4 inhibitors just have no major impact on function in the short run. Mm. But you, it is a good point you raised. Some of the, like the advanced trial was a glucose lowering trial, um, and there was an impact on renal outcomes, but that was apparent at 10 years of follow up. So sometimes maybe you do have to wait longer. To see also uh, the impact of, of glucose control. Yes, yeah. Of yeah, this. yeah. Absolutely agree, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, linagliptin had an effect on lowering of albumin, mm -hmm. albuminuria. And this is something which is becoming more important in nephrology. And I think we take uh, this uh, uh, success in lowering albuminuria when we may do in the future combination therapy? Or Look, what I do you think, think that would be a terrific, a terrific direction because they are, as you point out, they're two complementary um, parts of our management strategies uh, and it would be good to test, test the two together um, and see how they work in complementary fashions. I have already outlined the safety of mm. Carmelina, which is, I think, for doctors uh, a very good message. Mm. How mm. was the safety in um, Credence? It was, it was reassuring, which was good to see. Um, we saw fewer adverse events in patients on canagliflozin than on placebo. Um, we saw no effect on amputation or on, um, on fracture. So they were all very reassuring results to get back. Um, we did see some adverse events. Um, mycotic genital infections were elevated, as in other SGLT2 trials. Um, no impact on urinary tract infections, which was um, interesting and good to see. So overall, a reassuring message there. So one class is unlikely to address all renal risk. Mm. But uh, today, or let's say since three years we had no ago, since three years ago, we had nothing. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. now we get these beautiful trials dominated by the SGLT2 inhibitors mm. and these prominent effects. Mm. Then we see um, GLP-1 receptor agonists yeah. coming yeah. and yeah. DPP-4 inhibitors. So I think the future is good for, mm. for kidney patients. I think that's so true. Suddenly we're seeing a proliferation of trials looking at different mechanisms that might impact on diabetic kidney disease. Yeah. And it's so important, isn't it? You know, our dialysis units are full of patients who've got there through diabetes. So we really need to keep exploring all these mechanisms. Good. So kidney doctors get excited <laughs> because we have new instruments in yeah. our hands. Yeah. And um, yes, it's a really hopeful point. I think, um, as you say, the last 10, 10, 20 years have been a little concerning, uh, but now suddenly there's a wave of activity, and I think we are impacting on the disease, which is great. Good. Though so I think we should thank the audience for mm. attending our short discussion yeah. and I think we hope it was helpful. Yes, <laughs> thank you thank Christoph, you, thank, thank you. you.